Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حيا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهد الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له ولي مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك وبعد فإن أفضل الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في دين الله بدعة وكل بدعة في دين الله ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم أجرنا من النار my brothers, my sisters, respected community members, elders, shiuch, I begin with the greeting of Islam. May the peace and the blessings and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you. And upon your family members and your loved ones. I begin by testifying that none is worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reminding myself and you that the beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the final prophet, the final messenger and a servant of Allah. Reminding also myself and you that whomever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomever is allowed to go astray due to their own wrongful actions and sinful desires and inclinations, none can guide back except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, we begin by expressing gratitude. Alhamdulillah for all that was. Alhamdulillah for all that is. Alhamdulillah for all that is not. And Alhamdulillah for all that was not. Alhamdulillah for all that Allah has given us. Alhamdulillah for all that Allah has taken away from us. Alhamdulillah for all of the challenges that humble us. Alhamdulillah for all the blessings that we don't deserve, but allow us to express further gratitude. Alhamdulillah for the tests that we've gone through as an ummah and as a community. Alhamdulillah that we still have the capacity to articulate and to converse and to engage and to learn from these lessons together collectively as a community, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for the gift of Ramadan that brought us together. Alhamdulillah for the gift of the Quran that cleanses us consistently together. And Alhamdulillah for the gift of Islam that allows us to make sense of all that is happening in the world around us today. And that is the greatest gift that we can have. And it's sad to see some of us not able to fully taste that sweetness because of challenges, misinformation, or misconception 
So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us vehicles of hope for people, vehicles of gratitude for people, and messengers of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and ambassadors of Islam wherever we are and wherever we go, ya Rabb, ameen. My brothers and my sisters, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the, the ayah in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal nabiyu ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbika, wa illam taf'al fama ballagta risalatahu, Wallahu ya'asimu ka min al-nas. Allah gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a beautiful but powerful command. O Messenger, stand up and teach, convey, educate, share the message as it was given to you by your Lord. No additions, no omissions, no deletions, no refurbishing, no redecorating. Share it as it is, gently. But share it as it was given to you by Allah. And then there was the added statement. And if you don't, then you have not fulfilled your responsibility. And know that Allah will protect you from people. So don't worry about the backlash. Don't worry about the challenges. Do your part. Convey. And Allah will allow the heart that is present to listen, to be attentive, to learn, and to benefit. Now when this ayah was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Wallahu ya min nas Allah will protect you from people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam felt lighter. And he told his companions, we used to take turns. Ya Rasulullah, remember this is early on Medina. So there was a lot of tension, worry. The Prophet sallallahu could get assassinated. There are a lot of enemies. There are a lot of people who want to cause that social unrest. And want to take advantage of that vulnerability. So the companions were taking time watching and monitoring the Prophet ﷺ and making sure that he's protected as much as possible. But the Prophet ﷺ, when he received this ayah, he told the companions, I no longer want that. Let me be with the people. Let me sit with the people. Let me talk to the people. Let there be no barrier between me and the people when I am with the people. Because Allah has given me his promise that he is the one that is going to protect. And if I have the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't need any extra protection. When it's my time to go, it'll be my time to go. But I don't want to live in this constant fear and worry that causes me to uplift myself or put barriers between me and the people that I want to serve. And that is one of the most beautiful traits of the Prophet wasallam. He says, أَنَا أَجْلِسُكَ abdi." I will sit like a slave. I will eat like a slave. For I will always remain a slave to the people, to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says in another time, in another narration, do not do what the people of the book did to people before me. They humiliated them to a point where they made up things against them. And they rose or uplifted some of their prophets to a point where they made them divine. He said, I'm not that or this. I am a human being, born from a human being, and I used to eat the same food that you used to eat. I drink the same water that you drink, and I am one of you. Those were his words. I am one of you. And that's why you see many, many narrations that people came to visit, and they couldn't tell who the Prophet ﷺ was, because he didn't dress any differently from others. He didn't talk differently from others. Yes, he was eloquent, but he always spoke in a way that was accessible. His language distinguished the, the talent that Allah has given him, the gift that Allah has given him. But he was still accessible to the people. And this is one of the traits, my brothers and my sisters, that we need to revive. That sense of being, yes, focused on service, genuinely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in a way that makes people feel comfortable around you. You know, sometimes what happens, we become so focused on one clique, one group. We form our comfort zones. I'm very, very comfortable around these people who speak my language, who dress like me, who share the same lingo, who, who wear the same clothing, drive the same kind of cars. So you get very comfortable. And then when you're taken out of that equation or out of that comfort zone, you're not comfortable around others. You get a little bit, you know, uh, vulnerable or weak or you're not able to engage or you're socially uncomfortable to a point where you want to exit. Right? Exit that conversation or exit that space. 
But the Prophet Sallallahu had that security from within where he was comfortable, subhanAllah, in all of these contexts. To a point where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed an ayah, وَيَقُولُونَ هُوَ أُذُن بَلْ أُذُنُ خَيْرٍ They say that he's an ear. What does that mean? He's an ear. He's always listening to everybody. He's sitting with everybody. A poor woman comes and has a question. He will give her the time. A young man has a question. He will speak to that young man in a way that is attentive to his needs. A young woman comes with a, a, a difficulty or a challenge. He will come down to that language. Come down to that you know, life experience. Share that life experience. And have a conversation to a point, subhanAllah, where the hypocrites... They started to mock him. And they started to say, this man, Muhammad, yours, he's just an ear. He's not critical. He listens to everybody. He gives everybody the time to yap and yap and yap and yap. And he doesn't interrupt. And he takes his time to educate people. This is not the sign of a wise man. A wise man is protective over his time. A wise man is protective over his energy. Doesn't want to waste it on people who don't deserve it. And so the Qur'an came to respond, no, he's an attentive, kind ear that is what? That is focused on good. That is focused on collecting as much information from the individual so that when he's giving advice, he's giving advice that is actually what? That is actually kind, that is specific to the person's needs. And that was the Prophet ﷺ. Imagine nowadays in the world that we're living in, we are so quick to rush conversations. We're so quick to end dialogue. We don't want even subhanAllah any to point the fingers at us. Many of the scholarship or the mashayikh or the students of knowledge or those in counseling, there's such a high load, there's so much difficulty that in many cases it's rushed, it's quick, and it's not at that level of ihsan where it should be. And we need to go back to that prophethood model of being there for the people, being attentive, Listening to their needs, listening to their complaints, and being patient and easygoing. Even when the most difficult feedback is given, the Prophet ﷺ would humble himself and make himself available. Even when people got aggressive with him physically, physically, ﷺ would focus more on making sure that the person is heard than on his own protection. An example of this, subhanAllah, is when that man that the Prophet ﷺ borrowed money from to help a tribe that was in need. A tribe came, Ya Rasulullah, we're struggling with famine, we're struggling with drought, help us. He went to his home, got everything that he had, but it wasn't enough. Then he asked the companions to help, it wasn't enough. So he went on the minbar of the Prophet ﷺ in the masjid, and he started to collectively ask the people to contribute and to donate. And it was good, but it wasn't enough. So he had to make a deal with one of the members of another community group in Medina and to tell that member when it's time for the crops and the yield is here, we'll give it to you at a very good price. We just need some of the payment up front to help those people in need. The agreement was done and there was a time set in place for that person to come and collect the yield and collect, subhanAllah, some of the money as well. But that man came a little early, early than the date that was set for the return. And that man came yelling. And he said to the Nabi وسلم, with Umar on his right. They're walking and he hears وسلم, the voice projecting from behind him. Antum qawmun musul. You are people that delay the payment. You are people that take advantage. You're not good ethical business people. And so Umar ibn al-Khattab next to the Prophet وسلم, he tensed up. How can you say this about Rasulullah? The most ethical of people, the most genuine of people. We've lived with him, we've only seen we've only seen transparency, nothing except goodness. How can you say this about this man? And that man, subhanAllah, was coming to claim his money early. He pulls at the collar of the Prophet وسلم, from behind to the point where the restricted breathing of the Prophet وسلم, causes his cheeks to become red. And when his cheeks become red, and imagine the situation and the embarrassment. Umar ibn Khattab is about to turn around. But the Prophet ﷺ holds his hand gently. And Umar is about to say, Ya Rasulullah, give me the green light. And I'll put this man in his place. 
Barasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam collected in a collected manner, in a calm manner, he turns to Umar ibn al-Khattab and he says to him, Oh Umar, you should be the one reminding me to be calm during this moment. I should be hearing calming moments in this moment from you. And he turns to the man coming to claim his money, who is not Muslim at the time. And he tells him, and there is a better way to ask. Look at the word choice. Oh Umar, you should be the one that is giving me calm, aiding me to be calm and collected in this manner, in this time. And to the man who's coming, claiming that which is not yet his. He said, and there's a better way to ask. Subhanallah. And that was something special about the Prophet ﷺ. He was able to send the message across in the least words possible, in the most efficient manner possible, in the gentlest way possible, in a way that built bridges between people, not tore bridges between people. And then that man starts to, you know, people wind themselves up sometimes. And so the Prophet ﷺ tells Umar, Ya Umar, you want to help? Go and get that man what is his and give it to him immediately and give him more on top. Give him more on top. So Umar says, Ya Rasulullah, this way we're encouraging bad behavior. We're affirming bad behavior. If we keep doing this, then everybody's going to come and yell and scream and we're encouraging bad behavior. The Prophet says what? He says, let it be Umar. Just do what I ask of you. If you want to be helpful. And so the man goes, Umar Khattab goes, and he collects and he gives this man what is not his yet, but what the Prophet ﷺ conceded in terms of just letting it be and letting it go and subhanAllah expressing this as an opportunity. We're taking this as an opportunity to express goodness and ihsan even when he's treated with harshness. And then this man says, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And so Umar al-Khattab says, why, how, how, this doesn't make sense. You came yelling, presenting yourself not in the best way possible. You get what, and now you're accepting the, sh you're, you're becoming Muslim. Is I have read in my tradition all of the traits of prophethood and I found them in this man of yours, Muhammad. And there's one quality that distinguishes people of Allah. There's one quality that distinguishes people of prophethood and messengerhood. And that is the more you're aggressive with them, the harsher you are with them, the more they refuse to be harsh with you. They remain committed to that gentleness. Each and every one of us, we have borders that we don't want people to cross. So when people cross those personal borders with us, when they wear us out, when they start to take, when they, their words, their badness, their negativity starts to take a toll on us, we get defensive, we lower our presented, collected self, and that is when what? When the ego is broken loose, khalas, that's it. You want to be bad? I'll show you bad. You don't think I know how to be bad? I'm as bad as the baddest? Let me show you. But the Prophet ﷺ was not like that. This was clean. So you couldn't, there was no push, push, push to evoke that. Except if it was for Allah. If it was personal, right? If it was an opportunity to teach and educate and he had something that he could do about it, he would always be willing, subhanAllah, to let go of the personal grudge to give that person a chance to learn. To give that person a chance to see ihsan being embodied, excellence being embodied. And here in this moment, subhanAllah, this was one of the ways that that man was able to confirm that this was the Prophet And he became Muslim. And of course, he went on to donate that mount. He said, it's not about the money. I just wanted to test him, to test his integrity, to test his patience. And I bear witness that he is indeed the messenger of Allah. My brothers and my sisters, this was he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, with everyone that he came across. The people from his, home, from his home, Mecca. The people from his family, the family of Banu Talib, who took that home. Imagine a place where you grew up. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam grew up in his home. You married. He married Khadija in that home. You raised all of your children in that home. All the memories that you share there. Not just the physical value, but the sentimental moments and memories that you've had in that home. And you've had to leave that home because the people were trying to assassinate you. 
And when he settles in Medina, years later, now that he's entering Mecca now, and he can do with Mecca as he wills, they tell him that your home was taken by the family of Abu Talib. What does he say? Let them have it. Their father, Abu Talib, was so good to me when he was alive. The least that I can do is show a little bit of goodness back to his children. This dunya, what does it mean? Not much. Let him have it. SubhanAllah, look at that gentleness. When the wife of Ikrimah comes, Ya Rasulullah, Ikrimah, my husband, the son of Abu Jahl, he see, I see light in him. I see that he wants to change his ways. But the worry, the anxiety of being the son of Abu Jahl, who was a big enemy to you and to your people and to your companions, he did so much wrong. He, he's worried. My, my, my husband, Ikrima, is worried that if he comes to you, your people would not accept him. What does he say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He says, if there's light in him, I will never deprive that light of coming out. Tell him to come and I give him my assurance that he's going to be okay and that he's going to be protected. She says, Ya Rasulullah, it's just my word. He won't believe it. It's going to be difficult. Is there anything that I can give him to show him that you really mean this? So he takes his head cover off and he says he will know that this is mine. Give it to him so that he knows that I mean well and that if he comes here, all of the past will be forgiven. And Ikrima, he was about to get on a boat and go to Abyssinia and leave Mecca, Medina, leave the Hijaz forever. And when his wife comes with the head cover and she tells him, Rasulullah is willing to let bygones be bygones. It's in the past. Islam comes to eradicate whatever comes before. Ikrimah, this warrior, the son of Abu Jahl, he had tears in his eyes. And he came to the Prophet Wasallam in Mecca. He said, Wallahi, I did not see this kind of treatment, this kind of patience from my own family and the people that are closest to me. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And then the Prophet وسلم, he told the companions, the sons of Abu Lahab, the son of Abu Lahab, who eventually became Muslim, the son of, of Abi Jahl, who became Muslim, the son of Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira, who became Muslim, Al-Walid ibn Al-Walid, and Khalid ibn Al-Walid, and Ikrim ibn Abi Jahl, all of these people who their fathers were who they were in their enmity towards Islam. The Prophet ﷺ gave a reminder to the companions and he said to them, do not speak ill of their parents. Do not mention their parents in negativity in their presence. Because no, this is difficult. And they're trying. So set them up to succeed. Do not aid the shaitan against your brother. Aid your brother against the shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who follow that lesson, Ya Rabbi Ameen. May Allah make us encourage each other and help each other against the shayateen around us, not help the shayateen against each and every one of us. May Allah allow us to work together collectively and constructively. May Allah allow us to cooperate upon that which pleases Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and follows His sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa lakum wa lisa'il muslimin, fastaghfiru inna wa al-ghafur rahim إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعيده ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا. One of the most beautiful things about the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he was able to maintain this justice, maintain this peace, maintain this calm, maintain this tranquility, while also being firmly committed to Allah, while also holding himself to the highest level of accountability. You know, sometimes what we do is we use this peace and tranquility discourse to pacify people, to get people to accept their situation and to get people to accept their realities and to just not be agents of activity, agents of justice and agents of change. Yet the Prophet وسلم, somehow in the most incredible balance of manners, he was able to balance between the two. Being someone who went for justice, fought on the battlefield, advocated, held himself to the highest discourse, 
elevated the level of everybody around him to the highest manner possible to a point where he became icons of goodness, role models of change, yet he did all of this in the gentlest way possible. And this mix between firmness, firmly rootedness, and at the same time gentleness, the image in the Quran is given, a firm tree with clear foundations, hard foundations, firm foundations, but at the same time beautiful branches that extend, and they have fruits that are low-bearing, fruits that are accessible, fruits that are within reach. And that is an, an, a metaphor for what it means to be Muslim upon Tawheed. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us like that, Ya Rabbi Ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be justly committed to the issue of Palestine, Ya Rabbi Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to see a free Palestine. May Allah allow us to see a liberated Palestine, Ya Rabbi Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be advocates for them, Ya Rabbi Ameen. Agents of justice and change for them, Ya Rabbi Ameen. People who are going to stand up and be advocates in calling for an end to this genocide, an end to this displacement, and an end to this dispossession, and do so in the manner that the Prophet ﷺ did, constructively, with compassion, with mercy, with forgiveness, and with justice. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Allahumma hadi shababana wa nisa'ana wa rijalana, wa aghfir li walidina wa rahamam kama rabbawna sughara. Allahumma ansur al-musra'afina fi filistin, ya Rabb, ameen. Allahumma ansur al-musra'afina fi al-yaman wa fi al-sudan. اللهم رد إلينا فلسطين ردا جميلا كريما ورد إلينا المسجد الأقصى ردا جميلا كريما وارزقنا صلاة فيه يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله تستقيم وتراصع تدل وسد الخلل تتصل ولا تختلف straighten the line leave no gaps feet and shoulders aligned stay connected not divided الله أكبر سبحانك الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There's a dua request for the mother of Brother Jamal who passed away in Turkey. The janazah will be tomorrow. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give her the highest level of firdaus. Ya Rabbi Ameen. Allahumma ghafir lahu wa rahamha wa afi wa afu anha wa asya mudu khalaha. Wa rizuq al-firdaus al-a'la bidun hisab an awsa biqati a'zabin fa innaka ala kulli shayin qadir. There's also a dua request for Brother Abu Ahmed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also to make it easy for Brother Taha or the family of Brother Taha, who passed away 30 years old. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him the highest level of Jannah, Ya Rabbi Ameen. Give him forgiveness, Ya Rabbi Ameen. And this dua also requests for Brother Elias' sister, who's going through surgery. Um, sister Zameen is also sick. Sister Farah is also sick, going through surgery. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them all shifa, Ya Rabbi Ameen. Leaving no ailment behind, Ya Rabbi Ameen. Allahumma ashya mardana wa mardan muslimin, Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen. اللهم عافي مبتلانا ومبتلى المسلمين يا رب العالمين اللهم داو جرحانا وجرح المسلمين يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لموتانا وارحمهم وعافي معف عنهم ووسع عمود خلهم ونقه من الذنوب والخطايا كما ينقى الثوب الأبيض من الدنس وارزقهم الفردوس الأعلى بدون حساب أو سابقة عذاب فإنك على كل شيء قدير Assalamu alaikum. On behalf of Isna Canada, we wish you all an Eid Mubarak and we hope you enjoyed the blessed month of Ramadan with us. Check out our Instagram, isnacanada.com. Uh, sorry, check out our website, isnacanada.com, and our social media on Instagram, isna underscore Canada, for upcoming programs and events. We are also selling Popeyes in the lobby for $10. All proceeds go towards the masjid. Please grab one on your way out. All right, mashallah. We have a brother here, Brother Chipa, who is going to announce his conversion. 
announce and declare his shahada and we're going to welcome him into the community. I'm just going to wait one minute for those who are praying their sunnah inshallah just to wrap up. We're going to just sit down just to wait for them to wrap up and then we'll do it inshallah so not to interrupt their sunnah. But if you are about to pray your sunnah, please hold off until we do the shahada. All right, those of you that were praying your sunnah, most of you are done by now, so inshallah we'll do the shahada. So again, this is Brother Chopo who is accepting the beautiful religion, accepting the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him strength, Ya Rabbi Ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open doors of forgiveness and doors of rahmah for him, Ya Rabbi Ameen, doors of mercy for him. We ask Allah to give him tenacity, strength, resilience, to allow him to remain steadfast and to be a reason that others come to Islam as well, Ya Rabbi Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Ready? So inshallah, all the good that you've done in the past, if you're sincere in this declaration, all of the good will be retained. And any bad that was done will be forgiven and inshallah potentially also converted into good. So you're going to be better than all of us combined here. So please keep us in your dua, keep us in your prayers. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow you to be a source of good and ambassador of Islam, Ya Rabb Ameen. Ready? So we're going to do it in Arabic, then in English. Ashadu. Allah, ilaha, illa Allah. Wa, ashhadu, anna, Muhammadan, wa sallu, wa sulu, Allah. I bear witness, there is only one God, the true God, Allah. And I bear witness, Muhammad is the final prophet. Messenger and servant of Allah. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Congratulations. Takbir. Takbir. All right, you can come up forward, inshallah. Give him a hug, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah.